Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. On August 24, 1990, the Space Shuttle Discovery embarked on mission STS-31, which deployed a very special payload into orbit, a $1.5 billion Ritchie Kretchian astrograph known as the Hubble Space Telescope. It was equipped with a 2.4 meter primary mirror and 57,600 millimeters of focal length. It was the first of its kind, a visual light reflector telescope operating outside of the Earth's atmosphere, giving it a clear, undistorted view of the universe. The telescope is about the size of a school bus, measuring 43.5 feet in length. Hubble gathers energy from the sun using two 25-foot solar panels. It requires much less power than one might think, averaging 2100 watts of power usage. A hairdryer requires only about 1800 watts. As anyone who has tried to keep a steady view of their telescope mount knows how difficult it can be to track the sidereal rate of the Earth's rotation, Hubble had an even more daunting task of holding a steady image while orbiting at 17,000 miles per hour. This is done with an array of six highly sensitive gyroscopes that measure the speed at which the 11 metric ton telescope is moving and to turn and lock it onto targets. Initial instruments on the Hubble Space Telescope included the Wide Field Planetary Camera, the Goddard High Resolution Spectrograph, the Faint Object Camera, the Faint Object Spectrograph, and the High Speed Photometer. The original WFPC had a wide field of view of 2.6 arc minutes at f12.9 and a planetary view of 66 arc seconds at f30 using four CCD sensors at a resolution of a mere 800 by 800 pixels each. It contained 48 filters mounted in 12 wheels of the selectable optical filter assembly. They cover a wide range of broadband and narrowband visible light spectrums, as well as ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths. The WFPC and its successors, the WFPC2 and WFPC3, are the size of a baby grand piano. The conclusion we've come to from that is that there's a significant sp spherical aberration that appears to be present in the optics, in the, in the optical telescope system optics. The Hubble Space Telescope was almost a catastrophic failure due to a flaw in the mirror design. It was caused by a miscalibration error in the equipment during the mirror's manufacture. The result was a mirror with a spherical aberration of 2.2 microns, or 1 50th the thickness of a human hair. This meant the instruments could not reach proper focus and return blurry images back to the Earth. Since installing a replacement mirror was not an option, the Hubble engineers came up with COSTAR, the Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement. COSTAR corrected the aberration by placing small and carefully designed mirrors in front of the original Hubble instruments. This was installed in the 1993 service mission and was replaced in the final 2009 service mission with new instruments that were designed with their own corrective optics. COSTAR is now on display at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. Hubble's data has been key in several significant discoveries made from its observations. It was able to pin down the age of the universe at 13.8 billion years. The rate of expansion of the universe was found to be accelerating due to dark energy, which makes up 74% of the combined mass energy in the entire universe. Hubble analyzed the distortions caused by dark matter's gravity on light from distant galaxies and helped construct 3D maps of where the dark matter is distributed in the universe. Two new moons of Pluto were discovered, dubbed Nix and Hydra. Observations of star-forming regions in the Orion Nebula showed that protoplanetary disks of gas and dust are ubiquitous around many young stars. Hubble was able to observe comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 colliding spectacularly with Jupiter in 1994. 
On that same year, Hubble took the world's first images of the surface of Saturn's moon Titan. Observations of galaxies produce strong evidence that supermassive black holes are at the core of most galaxies, and Hubble programs further establish that masses of nuclear black holes and properties of the galaxies are closely related. Hubble was also used to make the first measurements of the atmospheric composition of extrasolar planets, identifying atmospheres that contain sodium, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, methane, and even water vapor. One of the most awe-inspiring discoveries made by Hubble was a chance experiment known as the Hubble Deep Field. Astronomers were curious what would happen if they pointed the Hubble Space Telescope to a random blank spot in space that had no visible galaxies present. The region was in the constellation Ursa Major and covered an area of about 2.6 arc minutes. The image was assembled from 342 separate exposures, taken with Hubble's Wide Field Planetary 2 camera, over 10 consecutive days between December 18th and 28th, 1995. The subsequent experiment revealed 3,000 galaxies in the Hubble Deep Field image, some of which are among the youngest and most distant known. By revealing such large number of very young galaxies, the Hubble Deep Field has become a landmark image in the study of the early universe. Three years after the Hubble Deep Field observations were taken, a region in the South Celestial Hemisphere was imaged in a similar way and named the Hubble Deep Field South. In 2004, a deeper image, known as the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, was constructed from a few months of light exposure. This was followed by the Hubble Extreme Deep Field in 2012. Outreach activities have also been an important part of Hubble's service to capture the public's imagination, given the considerable contribution by taxpayers to its construction and operational costs. As a result, the Space Telescope Science Institute created the Hubble Heritage Project. Founded in 1998, this project is a group of astronomers and image processing specialists who create visually aesthetic public images from Hubble's data archives, which are usually only shared within the astronomical community. The team is even granted observation time with the Hubble Space Telescope to fill in the gaps in the images they process. The project has been recognized for its contribution to public inspiration in producing some of the most aesthetically pleasing images ever produced in astronomy. In 2001, NASA polled internet users to find out what they would most like Hubble to observe, and they overwhelmingly selected the Horsehead Nebula. A select few amateur astronomers were even awarded time on the telescope, with observations being carried out between 1990 and 1997. The total time allocated was only a few hours per cycle, and was awarded only to proposals that had genuine scientific merit, did not duplicate proposals made by professionals, and required the unique capabilities of the Space Telescope. The Hubble Legacy Archive was created to allow public access to Hubble's raw image data online. It has been a popular archive for amateurs to process visual images as well as professionals analyzing the scientific data. Ed Houston, we're in free drift and Dr. Stevie's uh, going to get the telescope. All right, we're ready to go fix that thing. The Hubble Space Telescope, when designed, had a life expectancy of only 10 years. It has greatly exceeded that time thanks to five space shuttle service missions that replaced various equipment on the telescope. These missions were carried out in 1993, 1997, 1999, 2002, and 2009. This included the AFRA-mission CoStar, the solar arrays, various sensors, gyros, batteries, and new upgraded cameras. There is currently no set date for Hubble's retirement. It is predicted that it will continue to be in service for quite a few years still. Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, will be capable of probing much deeper into the early universe, but will not duplicate Hubble's wavelength coverage of visible light. Instead, it will concentrate on the further infrared bands. Since its design and development 30 years ago, Hubble's broadband spectrum and resolution can now be achieved on larger ground-based telescopes with the invention of adaptive optics that can compensate for the distorting effect of Earth's atmospheric scene conditions. 
When the Hubble Space Telescope is finally retired, it will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere by orbital decay and a controlled re-entry which will destroy the telescope over the Pacific Ocean. The legacy of Hubble's influence will last well past its lifespan, thanks to the efforts of amateurs and professionals alike who work to promote its awe-inspiring views of the cosmos. The technological breakthroughs implemented on the Hubble Space Telescope have been used to greatly advance the image quality captured by amateur astrophotographers by the use of thermally controlled CCD sensors and narrowband filters. Perhaps no other scientific instrument has captured the imagination and wonder of the public the way the Hubble Space Telescope has. It inspires students of all ages to ponder new science questions and to seek answers about the mysteries of the universe. <laughs>